Jordan Thomas here. Welcome to my channel where I focus on running performance, lifestyle, and culture. I'm just coming off of a nice long extended break. So if you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. I'm back with some fresh perspective and a fresh review on the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 30. And I gotta be honest, after I reviewed the Pegasus 35 and because I really fell in love with the Pegasus Turbo, I wasn't sure if I was going to buy a pair of the 36 at all or, or certainly not review them. But one of my subscribers, Derek Johnson, reached out and asked me about reviewing it. And so after I thought about it and the fact that I'm just running a lot more now, almost like 50 plus miles a week, I'm literally running through shoes a lot faster. And paying 180 every time for a pair of shoes just doesn't seem like the most cost effective thing to do. So I went ahead and kicked out the 120 and purchased the shoes and I'm gonna tell you about my thoughts. So it comes to the design. Listen, I am a person that believes that when you look good, you run good. And so I went with platinum tint and game royal and white. For me, they're just white and nipsey blue because I live here in LA now. And so that's the way it goes. I went with my true to size 11 and a half. And as soon as I put them on, boom, four things to me stood out. One, the upper wasn't as hot as the previous version. Thanks to an updated to the engineer mesh, there are now more holes than previous versions. I live in a much warmer climate now for me here being in LA and it's summer, so those things kind of matter. Two, the combo of the slimmer heel collar along with a slimmer tongue made the shoe feel less bulky and just kind of overall lighter. That bulky tongue from last year just wasn't it. it made my feet feel like it was a Pillsbury croissant in a can waiting to pop. <laughs> that gone, the 36 to me actually feels kind of like a minimalist version of 30 of the 35. Three, the midsole felt pretty broken in from day one. I don't know if I just bought like a bad pair last year because I know they didn't really change anything um, in the midsole, but I took them out to run along the bike path at a down at a Juniper Beach and they felt good from day one. The surprise for me was four, the outsole remained the same. And so I was very high on how the outsole worked last year because it meant that I could be on lots of different surfaces. And so when it came to performance, I took it out across every surface, concrete, asphalt, sand, grass, trail, track, water. Okay, I'm lying, I didn't run on water. <laughs> but I definitely took this shoe and traveled with it. But when it came to concrete and asphalt, the big thing for me was the cushioning. I felt like there was a nice, kind of like a nice balance of a, of a bounce as well as a bit of firmness associated when I would run on the concrete and asphalt. And that's important because I don't want to feel the ground, so to speak, when I'm just training. Listen, the summer for me has been full of lots of like 40, 45, and even 50 mile weeks. And I'm not really trying to push my body to the limit in terms of speed, but I am trying to just inc increment the time on my feet. And so the fact that my feet would still feel really good after that was, was a major win for me. Next being like sand, dirt, and grass, other thing that I switched up uh, over the summer is that I've spent a lot of time on those surfaces trying to preserve my legs. So I want softer surfaces to be on so that as I do road racing throughout the year, my legs don't feel trashed. And so one of the things that stood out to me was just the overall traction. The fact that I was still able to get a decent grip on these particular surfaces meant that when I, I could continue to go back uh, on those surfaces, I could do the speeds that I needed to do. When it came to the track, this is the summer that I've spent the least amount of time like on a track in a very long time. I go to the track maybe once every couple of weeks um, now as opposed to you know two and three times uh, out of the week. And so the thing that surprised me the most was the responsiveness. The fact that I was able to transition from getting a nice like cushion type feel from like a warm up or even being able to cool down to being able to move faster and then transition into a cool down and not feel like I needed to change shoes out. Now, if these are not racing flats, I personally, I would not race in these, but they felt really good across all those services. And so having all those services uh, checked off of my list, I'm like, these are 100% my workhorse. Like these are the shoes that I, I throw in my bag when I travel. These are the shoes that I just look for. And listen, they're durable. I don't really know Nike stances on these, but I even throw these in the washing machine and just keep moving. Cause I know that $120, I won't mind purchasing another price. Now, the shoe is not perfect. There's two things that are gonna be challenging for them to fix. Number one, you're not getting any cheat codes with this shoe. You're not getting any carbon fiber plates, like a 4% or so a next percent. You're not getting the design of like a turbo in terms of being able to, to have a shoe that just makes you feel like you're going faster. And to be honest, I don't need it for most of my runs, except for when I go more than 90 minutes. Good work. I appreciate having that carbon fiber plate when I do my longer runs. 
And there's even times where I've taken out the Pegasus Turbo and I've appreciated being able to do that uh, for my longer runs. So you don't get that with the Pegasus. And so for those runs, it's only one of those a week for me, then I switch to another shoe. Second thing, this is kind of petty, but whatever. Listen, Zoom Air just ain't Zoom X. Like once you've experienced the one, going back to the other is kind of like, meh, it's cool. So, but just like the great Bun B said, if you want, if you want that Zoom X, you gotta be prepared to pay what you weigh. He didn't say the stuff about the Zoom X, but he did say the thing about the pay, pay what you weigh and kick out the next $60 for the, for, for the Zoom X. So let me recap. So Nike fixed the things that I didn't like with making the shoe cooler, made it slimmer, made it kind of like more of a minimalist version, kept the outsole, which allowed for performance across a range of surfaces, kept the price the same. Yeah, the shoe's definitely worth it. So this shoe's gonna be ideal for the person that really only wants to own one or two pairs of shoes, someone that's like a Pegasus lover uh, like myself, or a person who's just kind of like uh, getting into running and wants to just pick out, a, pick out a good like starter shoe. Like this is the shoe that I recommend. Also, we we'll recommend it to a traveler or a person that's gonna be on a lot of different surfaces. I wanna shout out Good Vibes Track Club who held me down all summer long. They're the ones that gave me this really cool tee. And uh, I actually featured them back in May uh, during the marathon training and they're gearing up now for Chicago Marathon, Long Beach and, and Ventura. So if you're in LA looking for a team to check out, that would be one that I would recommend to you. And if you're just here visiting, pull up on us. I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas, peace.